How's it going everyone? My name is John and for those of you who aren't familiar, I'm working on getting my master's degree in clinical mental health counseling. And so today I wanted to look at Dr. Maruki's session with Makoto because we've already kind of looked at how he's worked with On and Ryuji and it's kind of been spotty. So I thought that this was a really interesting session because I think, and you'll see why I believe this as we kind of get into it, it shows growth kind of as him as a counselor. So if you like this kind of content, you want to see more of it coming from this channel, make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that notification bell so you never miss another upload. But with all that out of the way, let's just jump into the video. Okay. Okay. He's obviously familiar with who she is. She's the student council president. He's well aware of the happenings of the school at this point, I'm positive. So I'm, <laughs> I'm already going to kind of stop here because something that he's been progressively getting better at is creating a really relaxed atmosphere. And this is just kind of him as a person. He's very approachable just in general, and he kind of uses that strength in his counseling sessions. But I wanted to point this out in particular because I like to believe that he's picking up on Makoto's non-verbals in this situation. Because if you look at how she's sitting, she's very rigid. She's sitting very much straight up and down. She's not really actually using the back of the chair. And her hands are kind of in these tight fists, kind of clenched onto her lap. And while we know that she's a very kind of uh, proper individual, she's very formal you know, a lot of the time, it also shows that maybe she's not quite comfortable in this situation. So he's probably picking up on these nonverbals, and that's why he's really hammering home that I know the phrase counseling session can make some people nervous, but don't be. He's not outwardly calling out her nonverbals, but he is just kind of setting that tone from the outset, which I think is really, really good. Again, something he could have done better in his session with On, but something else that I want to pick up on that I haven't really talked about in any of the other sessions is how Dr. Maruki is actually carrying himself, because while looking at the client's nonverbals is really, really, really important in any counseling session, being aware of your own nonverbals is really important as well. And so if you look at how his counseling setup is always structured, he's always in a very, he's always staying up straight. He's always very kind of in a relaxed, comfortable posture, and he never has his arms crossed or his legs crossed. He's very open, both emotionally and physically. And this gives that kind of more relaxed demeanor. He's relaxed, so maybe this will help the client to unconsciously mirror the counselor's nonverbals, which will make them relax a little bit more, ideally. And so I also want to point out that he's not hiding behind a desk. Now, that's actually really important because that kind of also diffuses any power dynamics. When someone's put behind a desk, that tends to make people think that they are the person in control in this situation and that they are the one in power and you're the one just kind of getting their help. But in a counseling relationship, you don't want to ever have that power dynamic. You always want to be collaborators in the process. And so he doesn't hide behind any of that stuff. He has a clipboard. That's just to take notes. He probably has to have that for, for the school and maybe just for his own comfort level of taking notes on the client. And so I really like how he presents himself in this situation because a lot of the adults that Makoto has to deal with and has these negative experiences with really rely on those power dynamics. Uh, Kobayakawa always has a very closed off demeanor and he's always behind that desk. You never see him interacting with any students outside of that desk or, or at least very rarely. And so this is a different experience and therefore she gets a different environment. All right, that's enough of that spiel though. So let's just jump back into it.
And I think it's good that he's saying, I wish as student council president, they didn't force you into coming in at all. Again, building that rapport, building that understanding. And uh, her saying that she chose to do this gives Maruki a good understanding of where her headspace is at through all this. <laughs> and then Makoto just being her typical, <laughs> uh, very to the point self, just kind of throws him off a little bit. And I don't really have an issue with him saying that it sounds like she's more the counselor than he is in this situation because honestly he's yes it's uh, it could be perceived as self-deprecating but in general this all feels like in good humor it's a little bit of a joke and i think that joke this is something that i struggle with from time to time even is that Jokes should be used in counseling sessions. Counseling sessions, it's okay to laugh in counseling sessions and have a good time and a good conversation. So I think he's trying to keep it a little bit lighthearted here because of what we talked about. She seems kind of uh, rigid and kind of closed off. So he's saying, huh, you're sounding like more of the counselor than I am. Just a little lighthearted joke because when it comes down to it, a counseling session can only ever be good as the counseling relationship, the therapeutic relationship. And so I think it's good, good rapport building. So again, time skip happens. Let's assume that confidentiality stuff all happens in that because it's kind of boring. If you want to hear the whole spiel on that, go to my video about on and you can hear all about it. Okay, talking about her exemplary conduct, ideal honor student. And so uh, a couple things kind of happen in this that I think is a sign of growth from the session with Ryuji. Because it seems, whether it is the first time he's realizing this or not, it seems to me that this is the first time he's realizing just how good of a student Makoto actually is is and so that's important because in the session with ryuji he kind of let it spill that he knew about ryuji's broken leg that appeared to be a soft spot for ryuji he probably in his mind was like oh crap 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 i probably upset this kid and so i like to think he learned from that and so saying that he read a piece of paper and learned about makoto in that way in the counseling session I think is a lot better. And I also think it's worth, and I also think it's worth mentioning though, that as he was listing out her credentials and how, how good she was, she was very blatantly not making eye contact. She was very much looking down in a way, still maintaining that rigid posture that she had saying that she wasn't necessarily wanting this praise. And that's confirmed where we're at right now, where she says, oh no, I'm quite the opposite. I'm a little bit of a mess. And so, well, I don't think it was bad that he listed out these credentials. I don't think that at all. But I do think that it did touch on how she was feeling in that moment. So definitely, not bad, but we'll see if he is able to stay and avert the course to kind of talk about how she's feeling and not hammer home like, you're so great, you know? Did... Oh, he did really well with this. Typically, this is the point where he would kind of drop the ball or say something silly or foolish or whatever but this is a really pretty good response okay so him saying oh, well you had me fooled kind of moving away from that from from her credentials which seemed to be making her a little bit uncomfortable instead he says getting help isn't a bad thing at all and it's wonderful that you have a support system 
and reassuring people about their support systems. Support systems are so, so, so important to encourage in counseling. Because when it comes down to it, this counseling relationship, this is where we're at right here. But the second that client walks out the door, who are they surrounding themselves with? Are they surrounding themselves with people who will support them? Are they surrounding themselves with people who tear them down and make them feel worse? What are they going to after this? And so her expressing that she gets a lot of help, that she has this good support system, him saying that's awesome and saying that that's not a weakness, that's not a drawback whatsoever, I think that's really good in reinforcing that that's a strength to have that support system in place. So, <laughs> good on you, Maruki. Okay. I, I'll i be honest, I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that, I know it's only been a little bit, but he's doing well. Uh, she seems a bit uh, off-put though. And she's revealing that she can't feel uh, anything, do anything right by herself right now. And again, he asks a pretty good question. I, I'm a little just surprised, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, so did something go wrong for you? So. If I did have to nitpick it, I would say this is a closed question. She could just say yes or no. It doesn't lend itself to being uh, answered with a lot of content. or It doesn't have to be. The client could very easily just dismiss this question. So if, I, if it were me, I would ask her more along the lines of, uh, I'm sorry to hear that. If you don't mind my asking, why are you feeling that way? In that way, she could elaborate more. She couldn't just give that dismissive yes, no answer. And so I think that the content, what he's going for with this question is really good. And if he had just reworded it a little bit, it would have been perfect. But by no means is it bad or even, even kind of like meh. It, that's a good thing to ask. So, okay. <laughs> I'm actually like getting, see, okay. She's going to elaborate on this in a second, but but see, that's exactly why I said she could very easily say yes, but it's nothing major. Leave it there, dead in the water, unless the counselor asks to elaborate. So this would just be a, a way to head that off if this is kind of what happened. But see, that's exactly what you want to try to avoid is that yes. Okay. And so this feels like him kind of empathizing with her. And so the thing with him saying this is that while I agree with him 110%, I wish he had allowed her to come to this conclusion herself instead of just kind of leading her to this answer. And sometimes this can be a tough thing for counselors to do because while we might realize that oh this is the answer that you might be looking for keyword might be looking for you don't want to give that to them because that robs them of that realization and it takes away the meaning of this aha moment and so he could have very well taken this conversation in a similar direction by just saying something along the lines of uh, do you think that's why adults in your life rely on you so much and so now this gives her the option of saying yes yes this is why i think that or no maybe i don't think that and i think that closed kind of question allowing for that yes or no is a, is appropriate here because it's more of a thought exercise do you believe this do you not believe this so that you can kind of go from there as opposed to the example that we kind of just saw and so while i don't think that this is harmful by any means 
I think that would just overall be much more beneficial to uh, Makoto if he were to inquire this and let her have this aha moment for herself instead of kind of almost stealing that away and just giving it to her because it, it doesn't resonate typically and so I think that this just fits in with his character though as we can see by his personality spoilers for the third semester so if you don't want spoilers go away now uh, but we can see that kind of in his personality in the third semester he wants to give them the answers he wants to give anyone he tries to help the answers and fix them whether or not it's actually what they need or not he tends to to place that on them instead of laying them reason it out and make those decisions for themselves this is a very microscopic example of that but i think it's very in line with his character and so that kind of catches her off guard a little bit and she she just kind of responds that maybe things would have gone a little bit differently if she'd understood that and just saying you think so uh, and then he he does this thing I, again he did this with ryuji where he just kind of completely instead of processing through these these thoughts these feelings he just sort of completely deviates to another topic and i can totally see why this happens uh, i believe it's the the writers using this scene as a way for exposition for Maruki, and I totally get that. From a counseling perspective, though, I wish he would process through these feelings and stay on this line of thought a bit longer. And right now, I don't see why it's relevant for him to bring up her sister. It feels jarring. They were having good process. He's doing so well in this session so far. I don't see why he would bring her sister up she had brought up her sister thus far i don't know it, it's just kind of weird for me but it, it's a five minute session typically counseling sessions are about 45 minutes ish so i guess i can give it a pass but he should have processed through her feelings a lot more And then he empathizes saying it seems like you've been through a lot i i like this i think it's very much pointing out um uh, just her situation i don't mind uh, i don't mind that at all empathizing is never never a bad thing unless that's all you do and you don't actually provide tools to help oh Okay. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, like I, I know where he got this. I, I don't know. In this session, why he's asking this question, though. Yeah, yeah, you are doing really well. Um. It doesn't seem like last time that he's evading negative emotions. He's kind of accepted and looked at some of her negative emotions, and this is even kind of diving into them. And so this reeks of ulterior motives to me, I, I, because based off of their conversation, just the flow of it, I don't see why he would possibly ask this for therapeutic method and so this ties in with his third semester goals while uh, obviously i don't think he's planning on replacing god right now i do think that at this point in the story he's already changed sumire's cognition to make her be kasumi and so he might be digging into this to see if he should do something similar with Makoto if that's something that is really kind of bothering her. So I think that's where this comes from. It's digging for information that he does eventually use in the third semester. And so 
I I don't dig this. I don't dig this one at all. D the rest of it, it has been pretty pretty darn good, if I do say so myself. Uh, but he's kind of losing it a little bit right now, uh, because now he is something in counseling that's super important is focusing on the here and now. And so even if you're talking about past incidents or things that happened in the past, really focusing on how you're feeling, and how you're processing in the here and now can be really, is, is really what you want to focus on. Because the past is in the past. The past happened. It could still be affecting you. And so we shouldn't just ignore it outright. But processing through feelings and how it makes you think and feel in the moment and looking forward is kind of what you want to more so focus on because that'll help you to understand yourself and understand how you can progress. So we'll see where this goes. Yes. Again, could have just left it there. It was a close question. She might have grown up a little bit uptight. Uh, so that gives him a little bit of context, maybe, into into her. So that's good. And so even though he had that kind of bad moment, just kind of digging for that information that I, I, I don't feel good about, I do really like that we're here now. Or that mistake was made. Him checking in with her and seeing... If that him checking in with her and seeing if her support system is adequate right now really 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 good because that's what you want to know you want to see where they are at right now so he brought it back to the here and now which is fantastic seeing how are you doing in this moment uh, do you have a good support system do you have people around you that can help to build you up and even though it, that kind of that was something that you had struggled with and maybe you still are struggling with that how's it going for you now so that's really great and making sure that those supports are in place and helping to get those supports in place if they're not is something that a counselor can really help with setting those goals making those plans so good on you maruki we're back in it. We are back in it. That's a great check-in question. <laughs> Not a team of employees, just a group of phantom thieves. And obviously not a replacement uh, for um, her dad and sister, which of course not. Okay. And then just that nice word of encouragement from Dr. Maruki. And it seems like, and maybe I could be reading into this from Maruki a little bit much, but what Makoto just said there, keeping your chin up and pushing towards the future, I think that that really, really resonated with Maruki uh, at a personal level. And this is something that I feel to a profound level as a, as a counseling student, someone who, who's worked in a number of positions working with, with people, whether it's through counseling, uh, I've been a career coach for, for a little bit in my life, uh, about, for about two years. You learn so much from the people you work with. Uh, you're not just there to be a support to them. I mean, you are, you definitely are as a counselor, but in, in that process, you will learn so, so, so much from every person you come in contact with, which is so amazing. I've learned so much from the people I've worked with. And so I think that that's something that really, really resonated with him. Because if you think about his past, he had to, well, he, he brainwashed his fiance to make her feel better. And now he's dealing with his cognitive science research being kind of at a standstill. He's trying to finish this paper. And so that 
probably made him think, yeah, I have to keep my chin up and just keep pushing forward as well. It could be argued that maybe he shouldn't have, <laughs> just based on the events of the third semester. But I think that resonated really well with him, and I think that it's a great example of clients teach the counselors just as much as the counselors will teach the clients. Because when it all comes down to it, we're both people, and everyone has their own insights and worldviews that can benefit each other. I know that sounds kind of cheesy, but that's that's really how I read that moment. And then I really, really like how he reinforces that if anything comes up, if she needs absolutely anything, he'll be there to support her. And that's something that every counselor should do. Well, not saying, here's my phone number, uh, text me, call me, beat me, if you want to reach me any time at all. Because there do need to be boundaries, 100%. Counselors should have, have time for themselves, 100%. But saying that, if you need me, hey, and it's really important, I will be there to help you. I think, good on you, Maruki. I... This session, while it did have that little hiccup in the middle, it, I think it's actually pretty good and pretty beneficial. Okay, wow, I wasn't, okay, I wasn't expecting this. I will say though, uh, that I wish he hadn't thrown that self-deprecating comment at the end there. Um, I think that this is just uh, a feeling of uh, insecurity. I think it's almost like a defense mechanism, trying to kind of talk himself down. A lot of people in every profession have those imposter syndrome moments where you think you're doing worse than you are. So if you're feeling that, keep it in here. Maruki, stop telling the people you're actively working with that your skills are limited, because that's not super reassuring to them because you, you just did a pretty decent job there. Okay, let's see how let's see how it finishes up. And she appreciates the kind of words. And it seems like they have like a little closing chat there. And I just want to point out that it looks like he did pretty well with time management on that one. They didn't run out of time, the bell didn't ring. So by far the best session he's had just completely, that we've looked at at least, because he didn't do anything that could have been super damaging. He could have brought up some stuff asking about her parents. And so I, again, that's the one thing that I'm really honing in on that he shouldn't have done. And yes, I would have preferred that he would have used more open questions as opposed to closed questions. But overall, he did really well. And so I think that as time goes on, I'm realizing that I've really been trying to pinpoint if he has a specific therapeutic orientation, so a specific kind of therapy that he uses in these sessions. And so while I'm leaning towards, like I said in the on video, um, kind of more of a person-centered Rogerian approach, it's really hard to pinpoint with five minute sessions because you can't really pick out a lot of very specific uh, counseling techniques that he will use in these. And so I think that this was great for building rapport with Makoto. I could see her reasonably going back and talking with him more if she was having issues, because she goes through a lot in this game with the whole um, Kanashiro incident. And so she... I don't think it's outside the realm of possibility that she could go back in the future. We don't see that. Hopefully she does. Because if he's like that every time with her, even though, as we'll see later in the game, he's kind of the worst counselor and he really should by no means be a counselor. And it, obviously this being uh, his second profession, if he's like that every time with her, there could be some benefit in those sessions. So this one in isolation, good job Maruki. Uh, definitely 
definitely be definitely still kind of finding your footing as a as a as a counselor still kind of amateurish rough around the edges but overall i really wow okay i hope that the next two are going to be just like this one and so i actually want you guys watching the video to have a huge say in whose counseling session i look at next so there's a poll up on my community tab right now and i'll pop the the link to that right in the top right hand corner of this video right right around here and we are going to be deciding between his session with haru and his session with yusuke so if you have an opinion on that then go vote if you don't have an opinion go vote anyways because you know it doesn't matter i'll get to both of them at some point but that's it for today's video guys and i want to hear from you in the comment section down below do you think that this was a pretty decent session with makoto do you think that there's something that i missed in this interaction that uh, you weren't a big fan of leave your thoughts in the comment section down below and while you're down there why aren't liking this video why aren't subscribing to my channel and why aren't even ringing that notification bell so you never miss another upload and if you feel so inclined Go chat with me on Twitter. That's the best way to reach me besides the community tab. So the link to that is in the description down below. As always, I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day, a fantastic rest of your week, and why not even a fantastic rest of your month. And I will see you in the next video. Later.